Welcome to the How Did Show, where interesting people answer the questions, how did I get here? And how in the hell did I get here? With your host, Donovan Cornitz. What's going on, everybody? Thank you for joining me on another great episode of The How Did Show. And man, we got a real special one for you today. All right, check this out. So today's guest is an L.A. native who is one of the most versatile writers working in Hollywood today. Now, his writing and producing credits span several genres, including sitcoms, drama, late night sketch, variety and animation. Now, this fellow is currently executive producing and show running for The Real Husbands of Hollywood, More Kevin, More Problems, starring Kevin Hart, that's streaming on BET+. Plus. So, yeah, doing big things. Y'all show some love for my dog, Wayne Stamps. In what, the up, house. what up, What up, man? What up? <laughs> hey, hey thank on? you, first of all, for doing our voiceover for Real Husbands of Hollywood. That was hey, huge. Man. For our trailer, that was that was huge. Yeah, you know what? That's that was actually a lot of fun. I've been working with uh, BET for quite some years now doing VO. And then this opportunity came up and they were like, yeah, we want this to sound nothing like anything you've done for us before. We want like over the top, like big, epic movie trailer. I was like, really? OK, I never get yeah, to so, do that anymore. Like, Yeah, man. So for those who don't know, like when you hear that after five long, years, five long years, the <laughs> wait is over yeah man we yeah. are husbands of hollywood more kevin <laughs> more problems so yeah man that's cool so thank you for creating that opportunity for me hey man you knocked it out you killed it so <laughs> yeah but thank you for having me on your show man this is uh it's exciting man i'm happy for you i appreciate it man thank you so much for joining me man and uh you know what we're gonna jump right into this thing we're gonna keep it moving um so this is the how did show which means we want you to answer the first question of how did I get here? So tell the people, how did you get to become the Wayne Stamps we all know and love? Oh, man, it's uh, it's been a long journey, man. It's, it's been a long time, a lot of like ups and downs and struggles and, you know, fortunate uh, encounters with people. Um, but I'll go back to the start. Um, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. You know, I went to Loyola High School, which was like, you know, it was it was like my Fresh Prince of Bel-Air kind of environment because I came from Compton. And okay. I went to this preppy, you know, all boys school uh, named Loyola uh, in okay. LA, near downtown LA. Uh, really good school, but I, I was not prepared, man. And I, I was failing in math and science and, and everything. But I had one teacher, an English teacher, who said, you know, you should really think about writing. And wow. that, you know, back when I was, you know, 17, that that planted a seed in my head. Like, OK, maybe I can do something at least with that. There's always uh, that one teacher, right? Yeah. I yeah. Ha I have a similar story, but yeah, go ahead. And so that planted the seed, you know, way back when. And then, you know, I was having trouble getting into colleges because my, my GPA was <laughs> I was I barely graduated, honestly. <laughs> uh, and so I was just doing terribly. And, and but that that little like implant of a seed really like stayed with me. Um, and so I finally actually got into Cal Poly Pomona. <laughs> it was like the only school I got into. And my roommate, who was this guy, Al Brown, if if, if I ever can find him, man, he he was a, a really turning point in my life. Shout out he Al was Brown. This, like six, six guy who used to like come back into our little dormitory, like, you know, with his like he would shower like with his sneakers on so he would come back into the room like sloshing around, sloshing around. <laughs> yeah and he was kind of a mess and I'm like really like a neat freak and you know but his aunt was technical director for the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air okay Irma, Irma LZ Jones she was she was technical director and so she invited us down because he's like what do you want to do and I had like pictures of like you know Spike Lee and John Singleton on my wall like I was trying to you know, I thought maybe I could do something like in, in TV or film, but didn't know really how to do it. Right. And so she invited us down. So we got to see an episode of, you know, taping of Fresh Prince and got to go backstage and meet Will and the whole cast. And I was like, man, this is this is That's a cool, cool environment, you know. And then from there, I just like I lost contact with her and I, I was just out of the game. Right. So ended up getting a job working at a bookstore, which is still around, Esawan Books. It's a black bookstore in LA. Um, they're in Lamert Park now. And uh, and from there, like I met a bunch of like authors and I was like, well, maybe I can like write, you know, just the writing thing would always be around me, right? 
And so one day I was I was pissed off at the owners because I wanted a dollar raise. I was making six dollars an hour. <laughs> and one day, make money seven. I was making I was yeah, I was pulling it in. <laughs> and there was a woman who was making seven. And I was like, I at least got to make seven. Like, can I get what she, you know? And they were like, sorry, man, we got to let you go. Dang, just for asking. Yeah. So I was, I was, you know, but still, they, they were like my father figures too, right? Because they were older and, and I yeah. looked up to them and learned a lot about music and, you know, jazz and the blues and all these different, or like Barack Obama came to the store back then, like Michael Eric Dyson. Like I got exposed to like all these like brilliant minds, even though I was, you know, a terrible student up to that point. Um, okay. So anyway, so I had to get a job, ended up getting a job working at FedEx okay. <laughs> as like, I would be the guy, I was, I didn't have a car, nothing, right? So I would drive my, I would, I would ride my bike to Marina Del Rey from the Merck Park. I don't know if anybody in the LA area knows what that is, but that's, that's a hike. And I had to be there at like, you know, five in the morning. So I would ride my bike at like four in the morning. It was dark just to get to work. Right. Wow. So, <clears throat> so anyway, so I'm working at FedEx and my ultimate goal at that point was to become a driver. Right, because we were just loading, we were we were unloading the crates from the airport, putting them on a conveyor belt, so the drivers could put them on their truck. That was my job, and so I just happened to be, you know, and I was like, if I could just be a driver, I could make forty thousand a year. Boom. This is where this is where my mind was at the time, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so one day I'm riding back, you know, from from Marina Del Rey, and I'm going through Lemur Park, and they're shooting the opening credit sequence for Moesha. Wow. Okay. And and a friend of mine who I met at, at Cal Poly, this guy who I, you know, bumped into, he was a production assistant on Moesha. And he was like, yo, man, you should bring your resume down, man, because a lot of kids are going back to back to school after the summertime. Like you could get on as a PA like me. And I was like, oh, shit, that'd be dope. Yeah. Yeah. And so shout out to PAs, out. by the way, they make things run. Yeah, PAs. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me say this: a PA today is a lot different than the PA was back in, this was like 96, okay. right? So I was like, cool. So he set up a meeting with the producer and they called me like, hey, we'd love to like have you come down and talk to the producer, you know, see if, uh, see if, if it's the right fit. Again, I didn't have a car. <laughs> so, and part of a PA, you know, the job you is like, you can, like pick up lunches and deliver scripts right, and all right. that, at least back then you did. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I caught the bus down to Sunset Gower Studios right there, you know, by Roscoe's and, and got up in the meeting and, and it was great. He's like, yeah, so, you know, what you'll be doing, you'll be working with the writers. So you'll you'll get their lunch orders and, you know, you uh, copy scripts and deliver them to the actors and to all of our, you know, right. network people. And and that's what I was doing. Right. So. So, well, let me go back. I didn't know if I was going to get the job. Yeah. And I lied in the meeting and said I had a car. He's like, yeah, so you have a car, right? I was like, yeah, yeah, I got a car. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I caught the about. bus to the meeting. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so by the time I get back home, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm sneaking back to the bus stop hoping nobody sees me. And then uh, back then I had like a little blinking light on my, on my answer machine. He's like, hey, Wayne, uh, hey, uh, it's great to meet you, man. We'd love to have you start. Can you start tomorrow? And I was like, oh, shit. I, I was like, uh, yeah, I, I can sure. I can be there tomorrow. I just got to get a car in like it's, 12 hours. Exactly, man. That's one of those like, <laughs> like the best feelings in the world, but then you're like extreme panic sinks in, right? <laughs> so I called around. My mom, I'm like, damn, I need to go to work. And I'm like, ah. So I, finally, I called a good friend of mine, his uncle, who is like, I'm really tight with to this day. He's like, look, man. I got a 1970 Pontiac Le Mans Sport Coupe in my driveway. He's like, it's on four flats, but if you can get four tires, you can have it. It's yours. It's yours you, to keep, right? Yeah. And I ended up going to like, I think it was Price Club back then, and got four tires, man, and rolled up on to the Sunset Gower lot the next day Nice. as a, as a production assistant. That, that was my very first job in the industry, and I go upstairs in the, in the Production coordinator was like, "Hey man, can you pick up Bernie Mac from his hotel?" What? That was that was my very <laughs> first, first job. Yeah, very first job. I rolled up to the Mondrian to pick up Bernie Mac. Wow! So, like I had this car for two hours, and now I got to put Bernie Mac in this 1970. <laughs> yeah, I, exactly, man. <laughs> so, but Bernie was cool, man. Bernie was like, I had on some Marvin Gaye. He was like, "Oh, what you know about Marvin? You don't know about Marvin." 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I remember he was just so cool, man. He had me drive to the Sunset on on uh, to the Tower Records on Sunset and buy every <laughs> Marvin Gaye CD. He's like, yo, really? man, he gave me like $300, right? <laughs> and I think oh, it wow. might have cost like 100 and something. He's like, no, keep the change, big Wayne, keep the change. You want your hair cut? I'm like, Bernie, man, I can't be in here, like, you know. <laughs> Mooching off the <laughs> town. Yeah, like, yeah, you're going to oh, get me fired, man. So anyway, so I'll cut to from there. That was my first job, man. I, I did, I was a production assistant for the first year there. That was season two of Moesha. Um, and then from there, man, I kind of like worked my way up to a writer's assistant. Okay. And kind of got stuck there, man. I was a writer's assistant, man, from 97 to, I don't know, probably to like 2004, five. You know what I mean? Okay. It was for yeah. a while. And I was like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to break out of this. And um, But to his credit, Ralph Farquhar, who's been a mentor to me from the very first season I was there, said, hey, what do you want to do? And I said, Ralph, I think I want to write. That's, you know, I, I don't know. You know, he's like, well, just write me a script. And I was like, all right. So I wrote a spec, what they call a spec script, just a sample script of Frasier, which was like a hot I know, remember thing Frasier. At the time, which is probably one of the most complicated, difficult <laughs> scripts you can write. But I took a crack at it and he liked it enough and just sort of like, you know, kept me on his radar. And I played basketball for the <laughs> entertainment league where he was, you know, he was out there with us. So we just kind of created that, you know, connection that way. And he Without Ralph, I, I would not be in the position I'm in now. Right. And that was, like I said, that was 96, 97. Um, and so, yeah, so that, that, that was my foray into entertainment. Um, and it just built working, from, working at Moesha. from that opportunity. And, wow. and I mean, it's such a like, you know, from, I mean, that was, that was 96, 97. That was my first job. So you talk about to get to 2022 has been a lot of like, you know, from there, Ralph called me. Uh, you know, a few years later to work on to work on the Proud family. Oh, OK. As a, yeah, as, a yeah, script, yeah. as a script coordinator. Right. But I was so like tired of just being the writer's assistant script. coordinator. I'm like, I'm about to get some jokes in the script. Right. So while I was sitting there typing notes, I was like constantly just trying to pitch jokes pitch and pitch that, funny yeah. and, and get into the characters and all that. And they were kind of like, oh, this dude's funny. Yeah, yeah. This dude, he could do this, you know. Nice. I think it took a while for me to crack that shell, but it, it but I finally got in there and he um I, I'll I'll send you a picture of like our, our first season of, of uh prof and our writing staff and I'm in the picture. You in I wasn't, there, baby. I wasn't getting paid as a writer, but I was in the picture. <laughs> <laughs> they, they took a picture of the staff. You were in there. So yeah, and I got to write, you know, a few of the episodes. Um, and that was like the first time. I was able to write an episode by myself because I remember like, I think maybe season four when I was at Moesha, they gave, uh, or season three, they gave the writer's assistants a chance to do an episode. We had to write it together, right? Oh, okay. Like a group and they gave, but they gave us the clips episode. So, which was just like setting up flashbacks to previous episodes. So, you know, I think I might've written like six pages. We all wrote like six pages because most of the script was just, flashbacks to yeah, other episodes right. so it wasn't like a real, real full episode. Script. yeah 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 so um but yeah Barov gave me my first chance to write a script on my own and to write for a, a classic animated show a black animated show at that ah, that's like, that's like the huge, proud family man. was you know yeah i that remember that was a big deal yeah yeah so and they're coming back out they, they're doing a the reboot so that's that's coming out i think uh the end of february so um, so shout out to Ralph and all those guys who work on the Speak new. Up to Ralph. <laughs> but but yeah, but he's kept me working, man. But you know, as a writer, man, you just have to expect that you might go from a show, you know, six, nine months, and then after that, you're either hoping the show gets picked up or you're hoping that you get another job on some other show. Yeah. And there were a lot of times where that next show took a year and a half, two years. Yeah. So then what do you do? You know what I mean? I was like, well, into my in. 30s. And like I said, I, I was I was struggling. Man. I had, you know, I had this apartment and I had it for a while and they raised my rent and I wasn't working. And I was like, I had to I had to get up out of there. Yeah. yeah. So I was, you know, well into my 30s and had to move back to my grandmother's couch. Wow. You know what I mean? So that was, that was like... You had um, to go to be, like, again, a starving artist. Like, you had to live the starving artist lifestyle for a little bit. Man. 
<laughs> I had to put stuff in storage, which I didn't know I was going to pay for storage. Yeah. Um, and the first time I, uh, I drove up, I had all this stuff in my little Nissan Maxima because I couldn't fit everything into my little storage space. I had stuff in my car and I pulled up outside my grandmother's house and I just sat there for like hours because I was so embarrassed yeah. to be like in my 30s, not being able to like, you know, pay for my own place. And or even a storage unit. <laughs> Or in barely a storage unit, <laughs> right? Hey, look, man, that that just shows that not everybody has that. Like people think, like, oh, they, they see you now, right? They see stuff you're working on now. Or like people even see things that I'm working on. Oh man, you got this. You did this. You did like, yeah, but you didn't see uh, when I was like literally trying to look at my mom's couch for like random money, like lunch money. <laughs> you know, yeah. like maybe I can get seventy five cents out of this couch. Um, yeah, I mean, you talk so, about yeah. two steps forward, two steps back, man. Going back to Ralph, I remember after the Proud family, I, I got into the Disney Writing Fellowship, you know, okay. I, on my third try. Like, I, I submitted a couple of scripts in the, in the third. <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm sending the same script I sent in last year. I'm not even writing a new script. I'm just whatever. And it was a spec Bernie Mac, <laughs> Bernie Mac script. And I remember they called me and said, hey, we, we did my phone meeting. I got past the first part of it. And when I had to go in for my interview, I had the worst flu ever. So I'm like, man, oh, I'm man. never going to get this thing. Like I could yeah. barely, I was barely even able to sit up straight yeah. in this meeting. And I'm like, I, I didn't get it. And, and sure enough, I got it. Right. And so I was <laughs> happy about that. Because, you. <laughs> you know, I don't know what it is now, but back then the, the fellowship was like 50 grand for the year. What? I'm like, you know, that was better than my uh, what I wanted for FedEx. You know what I mean? I was paying yeah. more than FedEx. Yeah. Um, so, so I was happy about that. And from there, um, they they put me on a show. You first of all, when you're in the program, you get to like meet other showrunners, and <clears throat> they, they put you up for different shows. And the show they put me up for was a show on Disney Channel called Feel of the Future. I don't know if you've ever heard of that, but it's I think I've heard that, but I don't yeah. I don't remember anything about it. But I know I've heard that before. Yeah. So that was, you know, and here's the thing, like people say, well, you know, write show that you want to write or that you love to write for. Here's what I always say. Write a show that you just don't like at all, because <laughs> nine times out of 10, <laughs> you know, you might you might have to like write on a show. You like I have I have no enjoyment writing for the show, but that's where you get. Right. Yeah, You got to do what you got to do, man. Because me and me and Calvin Brown, who was a writer for the Proud family mm -hmm. there now. We had a we had a pitch meeting at Disney, and right they were like, "All right, we want to hear what you guys want to pitch us, but first let us show you this show." And they sat us down, and it was "Feel of the Future," and I was like, "Man, this show is I don't know. There's a caveman and his family from the year 2020 or whatever what 2021 yeah. back then was like, you know, <laughs> yeah, in the way distant easy, future. Yeah. yeah, we were like, I don't know, man. This show is kind of yeah. And you know, lo and behold, man, like two years later. Hey, you got the job on Field of the Future. I'm like, oh, cool. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yeah. So that that was um that was that. And then after Field of the Future, man, we I did one season, the show got canceled. And yeah, so the fellowship cool. was over. That money had, you know, gone away. And I didn't have any other prospects. And I think I was out of work for like a couple of years. And so I'm at some party, which I probably shouldn't have been at because I couldn't afford to, you know, yeah. <laughs> put gas in the car to get there. But I saw Ralph at this party. I'm like, yo, Ralph, oh, like, hey, man. I'm like, what are you working on, man? Because I could use a job. He's like, oh, man, we're doing a show called Just Jordan for Nickelodeon. And I was like, oh, cool. I just knew I was going to get a writing job. I'm like, well, you know, if you're looking for writing, he's like, ah, we just staffed up, but um. But but you know if if you if you're down we can we looking for a writer's assistant and I'm like man you oh, gotta be not crazy. again. <laughs> but he's like hey he's like just do it I'll give you a script right yeah and 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 that's what I had to do like it was another like you know step back but yeah you got to do I it, got man. a script out the deal and and you know it kept me going for a little bit longer and uh, yeah man so and then of course after that. Uh, I worked on a couple of other things with Ralph. Like, you know, he did the show called Who's Got Jokes with Bill Bellamy. Okay. Um, he did Bazin After Dark. Michael Bazin had like a late night talk show okay. on TV once. I worked on that. Um, we did this animated series called The Jammies, um, which was yeah, like one of the first cool. black 3D animated cartoon series. I think it was on Netflix for a while. I'm not sure where it is now, but 
Um, but Ralph, you know, going back to Ralph, he kept me just working enough to kind of get by like year to year, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I, I, I credit him just for like really sticking with you, man. That's game. like true support, man. Yeah, man. And, and I don't know if Ralph knows this, but like I didn't think Ralph liked me like at all. Like he was just, <laughs> I don't know if it was tough love or what it was, but hey. but he just I didn't think he was in my corner. But I look back, man, and he he's kept me he working all these years. Beginning. Yeah. Man, that's that's an incredible like journey, man. And that just shows like uh you see those things, um, like those memes online where they show, you know, what people think success is, like the straight line, yeah. but it's it's like up, down, around, back, forward. I'm about to blow yeah. your mind real quick. So I saw that you worked as a showrunner on um, The Rundown with Robin Thede. The Rundown. I was the voice of that show, too. <laughs> <laughs> the Rundown with right. Robin Thede. Yeah, oh, I did that. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah man. man. The connections were there. We didn't even know. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, man. So so let me go right back to where I was on my grandmother's couch, because this is after just Jordan. This is after the fellow. This is after all of that. Gave up my apartment. I'm, I'm basically, I'm not homeless because I'm, I got my grandmother's couch, but I'm like, I'm 35, 36. To me, that's like, yeah. like how do I get out of this jam, right? Yeah. <clears throat> and so, so I'm, I'm, I think I may have gotten down to like my last four hundred dollars to my name. Like yeah. I didn't have any IRAs and any savings and no other accounts that I was stashing. Some this was like period to my, to my life, right? Yeah. And so I'm on her couch almost out of money and i find out that my girlfriend is at the time is pregnant she's my wife now but she was she was i found out she was pregnant perfect timing (laughs) and i don't i don't even have a job yeah so it was like one of those things like how am i ever going to get out of this predicament this this if to me it felt like i don't you know I was like looking to take a job at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. Yeah, we'll do what you gotta do. Like, yeah. you know, I don't know how much a baby's gonna cost. Like, I don't even know how to prepare myself to take care of a child. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So luckily I went to a um a networking event um in Century City. It was like a CAA used to have this thing where they would host a night on Friday and they have different writers and agents would show up. And I didn't get an agent, I didn't meet a writer, but I met this guy who worked at Final Draft. <laughs> right. So okay. I was like, yo, I'm like, oh, final draft, cool. My first thing, I wasn't looking for software. I was like, hey, are you guys hiring? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, hey, you know what? Uh, this guy is going to be leaving next Friday. Like, I'll tell our, our supervisor. Maybe he can give you a call. And I was like, please. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. Um, and so I'm, I'm literally working at the Image Awards. I always tell the story because I'm like, I saw after I did it, I'm like, I would never go to the Image Awards until I'm, you know, until I'm nominated for one. Okay. Right? So, because I was working at the front gate, handing out passes for the real talent writers, yeah. people who were up for awards to go into the show. And, and like I, that was me. A tiny little slap in the face every time, right? Like This is this is after I'd already been working. I worked on Proud Family. I worked on shows. Yeah. And here I am, like, you know, back out passes, at square yeah. one, you know. Um, so anyway, so I, I, I lucked up. The guy, I'm sitting there, and the guy says, hey, uh, can you take a meeting with my supervisor tomorrow at Final Drive? I'm like, sure. So I drive all the way out from Compton to Calabasas, <laughs> so which is almost like a two-hour drive. Yeah. And I get the job as a technical support, you know, guy. Yeah. So I'm I'm helping people. I'm helping writers' rooms when their software doesn't work. The writer's room you would the love. Writer, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm helping other working writers, you know, with their script software. Yeah. And so, but the guy, before I got the job, the guy was like, so you're a writer, right? I'm like, well, I mean, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm not a working writer. So he was like, well, if you get a, if you get a writing job, are you going to like, what are you going to do? I'm like, man, I'm, I'm, I got a, a woman who's pregnant right now. I'm driving from Compton to get this job. Like a writing job is like the furthest thing that's yeah, yeah. You know, gonna happen right now. So, so I got the job and I'm driving every day, two hours there and back just to, you know, make, yeah. you know, 900 a week or something like that, baby on the way. And then I get a call from a friend of mine, Juba Saeed, who was like working at TV one. He's like, hey man, uh, there's a show called Love That Girl. And Bentley Kyle Evans, who Bentley, who, you know, show ran Martin and created the Jamie Foxx show. He's like, uh, I gave him your script. And, he, you know, he wants to meet with you. I'm like, oh, 
okay, this is this is maybe like two and a half months in to this job, and I got to work three months to get benefits, right? So I'm yeah. just trying to get to the third I month, just need so that third have, month man. just so I can have benefits kick in, so I can help yeah, you yeah. Know, for this child, right? And so, talk to Bentley. He's like, "Hey, man, really loved your script. Would love to meet with you. Uh, let's let's meet tomorrow." And I'm like, "Perfect." And I guess from having driven from Compton to Calabasas <laughs> for two months, yeah. I go after work and I stop, put gas in my car to make sure I can get, you know, into the valley and my car will not start back up. Oh, man. And I'm like, you got it. Like, this is my one chance to get back into the whole writing the game. game. And, and I can't get there. And I'm thinking, mm-hmm. all right, so... If I cancel this meeting, who knows when he'll be able to meet again? I'm just thinking the worst, right? And Bentley, you know, being as cool as he's like, oh man, no problem. I've been there, man. Like, hey, let's 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 do it tomorrow. Cool. And so, you know, finally met with Bentley, had a great meeting. And I'm he's all right, man. Well, so we got, you know, we got some decisions to make and we're looking at some other people, but you know, I'll, I'll be in touch. And this is kind of how the hiring goes. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll let you know what's gonna happen. I'm like, all right, so I didn't think anything of it. So I get home from work one night and Bentley calls me like, yo, Big Wayne. Hey, man. Uh, so we want you to come and, you know, work with us on Love That Girl. I'm like, great. He's like, uh, can you start tomorrow? And I'm, I'm like, work tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I got here. Yeah. And, and mind you, I told my supervisor, like, it's not going to happen. So now yeah. I'm leaving my technical support team short to, yeah. you know, to help support all of Hollywood with all of their script problems. And I was like, I had to call the super. I'm like, hey man, um, I know I said so, I wouldn't do this yeah. to you. But Remember we talked about that. Uh, yeah, but I'm like, I got a job. Like, man. Your your hurt feelings and, and upset and anger at me is not worth. It's, it's not enough for me to turn down this writing job. Yeah, for real. I'm like, is what I can make in you know six months doing that i can make in six weeks on this writing job you know what i mean so exactly I, I, yeah. I have to be out so <laughs> but so that was and, like your way back in and you ain't looked back since that was my way back in man and it worked out because like where we lived at the time i finally was able to like save up enough final draft money get our you know get us a little apartment in la got and off like, the couch got off the couch <laughs> and and where we shot the show was like two minutes away from where we lived so it was like it was Look like the universe was like just shifting in like literally you just had to suffer a little bit. That's all to, to get you there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and and wanted to test me to see like how badly I really wanted to be in this business. Because well, I've had friends man. who've gone through the same kinds of things and like, I'm just gonna take a job at a law office and yeah, just you know. go with the short thing. Yeah. Well, look, man, I think that story is very common, especially like in Hollywood, but I mean anywhere really. Um, I know I have a similar story. I mean, I know people personally that same thing, like they, everything just kind of fell apart and then they thought it was going, then it fell apart again. And then they just stuck with it. And then eventually, like you said, things just kind of work out and shift in your favor if you stick with it and you're uh, consistent. And I think that's just a testament, uh, to like your ability to stick with it, even through, the stress and like the panic of, man, I got a kid coming. Like, well, yeah. <laughs> I got to figure something out, man. So to anyone that's watching that may be doubting, do you want to still pursue that dream? Do you still want to do that thing that's been nagging? Like stick with it. Cause yeah. if, yeah. if it's bugging you enough, it means it's, it's meant for you to be there and you will drive yourself crazy with miserableness. Yeah. <laughs> to add the, next, the next chapter on that story was my, my girlfriend at the time who we're married now, but she was like, you know, she was pregnant on our last day of, of, uh, of shooting love that girl on the set, you know, cause they, they gave me like a little bit part on the show, just which added another little check in my pocket, which I was happy about. Okay. And she literally delivered our daughter the very next day after we wrapped. Like it was just wow. like everything. Yeah. And so I got to like, because I had enough money from that show saved up, I had written a couple of scripts for that show. I got to like spend the first, you know, six, eight, nine months with my daughter when she was born. And then after that, I'm just sitting at home chilling. I get a call from Ralph again, like, hey, man, um, I got a call to do this show called Real Husbands of Hollywood. If, I, if, if it goes, I'm going to give you a call. And a month later, I'm on Real Husbands working with Kevin and JB Smoove and 
Robin Thicke and Dwayne Martin and all those guys, Nelly. Wow. <laughs> and and yeah. That's like so, that's an incredible trajectory of like FedEx and then all the way to now working with some of the biggest stars in the business, man. And like um I see on, on some of your posts, like all of these people are all, you know, have huge respect for you and what you're doing, especially for that show in particular. So I mean, that is just that's incredible, man. Yeah. So, I, I, you know what? Round thank of applause. You, man. Round of applause for Wayne Stamps, man. man doing his thank thing. you, man. And I, I will say this to anybody who's like, you know, with whether they're in the struggle now or you know, just like starting off or or just trying to break through. I think the one thing that's always helped me is just being kind to everybody I meet. Yes. Um, whether oh it's, goodness. you know, absolutely. Ha- Cause I've done every, literally every, you know, I've done the PA, I've been the writer's assistant, I've been the script coordinator, I've been the staff writer. So I've, I've been in all those different seats. So I try to always treat everybody <laughs> on the set, on the show, actors, everybody with respect and kindness and I yeah, think people know, really man. do, especially in this town, I think people really do appreciate that. Um, and it's not funny. I tell, I told somebody the other day, I'm like, I'm like, I care more about the people on a show than the show anytime. Yeah. Like, like it, for me, it's always about the people. I mean, obviously the show, like you have to be, you know, concerned about putting out the best product. Of course. But when the show goes away, what's left behind are those relationships with people. So I Absolutely. try to make sure that I nurture those and, and, you know, keep in contact with folks as best I can and try to help as many people, you know, like we've had writers assistants who wanted to be actors and I put, you know, put them in the show. Like, let's, let's just try it. Like what's the worst that could happen? Yeah. yeah. You know, so I try to keep that in mind. Um, Cause you know, you can get, you know, you can get bitter. You can get like, like, how come I don't have the big overall deal? Like you can get all of those things, but I try to, you know, make sure that I'm, I'm at least appreciative of all the people around me. But look, man, it shows. It shows. And it's it's one of those things where you will, like you said, at any time a show can get canceled or a production can get shut down. And then, yeah, you're left with those people that you treated like dirt. <laughs> now, yeah. nobody wants to recommend you for something or work with you again. So absolutely. Yeah. That's why I gave the shout out to PAs before earlier, because I've worked on stuff, some on camera sets and commercial sets. And the PAs are like doing all the grunt work that, you know, especially I was like the talent. I, I felt bad. They're like, hey, you know, what's your lunch order? Or can I get you a Gatorade? Or can I get you this? Or can I? I'm like, like, I can do it. I, no, 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 no. I'll, I'll do it. I mean, yeah. and I was just always blown away. And I always made a point to like thank all of them personally and from like the grips, everybody, like all the dudes with the different colored tapes on the string hanging off their belt, like everybody, yeah. treat everybody with uh, respect. And you know what? That's, that's key to pretty much anything in life, man. Just be nice. You never know. You never yeah. know who who's going to like come around and be in your life later or who knows somebody that knows somebody that has an opportunity. So, yeah, yeah man, that's that's a that's a gem for sure. I hope you guys are paying attention. Um, but look, man, what we're going to do is right now we're going to have to spin this wheel. And that is <laughs> the, the wheel, wheel of what? So, yes. We're going to take this thing. Got to be the wheel of fortune. I already, I already went through the wheel of misfortune, so it's got to have some good uh, some good energy coming off of that wheel. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's all good energy. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to spin this thing. All right. Whatever it lands on, you got to answer, all right? I'm with it. All right, let's do it. World record. All right. So Man. world record, what that means is what is something that you feel you could set a world record in? And that could be anything that's like ridiculous, silly, something that's not currently a category that the Guinness Book of World Records even recognizes. But what do you think is something in your life that you could probably have a good chance of setting a world record for? Man, I don't, uh, I, I could probably set the world record for uh, the most consecutive days of stressing out, <laughs> <laughs> of worrying. Uh, I, I am like, I, my wife is trying to like get me through. Like I have this like, I, I don't know. It's not just the pandemic. This is like just me from like, you know, childhood. Like I've always felt like worrying about things like sort of like is an like energy that helps me solve the problem. 
And that that's a horrible strategy for anybody who's <laughs> watching. Like, do not do that. Um, but yeah. So I, <laughs> you can set the record for most consecutive days filled with worry. Oh my stress. god, man. It is not good, man. It is not good. You but, give yourself uh, an ulcer or something, man. I'm telling you, man, it, it's not <laughs> good, but like it works for you though. If for some well, it works for me work-wise. It doesn't work for me <laughs> physically because it is not, you know, so I gotta make sure I'm like, you know, working out or do something. But um, luckily my wife is a good cook and all that. Like she makes like she's like a chef, so I sort of like, you know, can get away from it for a little bit. Right, with that right, right. Meal. But yeah, man. But yeah, people out there, like, do not worry, man. That That is not a good, uh, that's that's not a good. Don't do as I do. Life. Do as I say do. I'm sure I'm going to get to the end of my life and be like, damn, if I would just like not have worried so much, it would have been so much more enjoyable. You know what I mean? I think that's. <laughs> I have 10 more years on my life if I didn't yeah. worry so much. Yeah. We're going to have to work. We're going to have to work on that, Wayne. We're going to have to yeah, work man. on getting you to stress less. Yeah, man. So, but, <laughs> well, that's yeah. all right. Well, you know what? That's a valid answer. I'll take it. <laughs> I think I heard an answer once was like most consecutive days without sleeping because they're like just never I was, sleep. Yeah, I was gonna say that because I'm like that too. Like I can work, you know, for you know days and days and and like to like delirium. But um, you know, yeah. then you're gonna stress about not sleeping. Yeah, I'm gonna stress about I should have gotten more sleep. I'm. You it's know. a wicked cycle, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, right, I just well, cool. I, I put that I put that trait in some of my characters too. Like you know, I try to like use everything in my life to try to like inform characters when I'm you know neurotic <laughs> characters like that. You know, if somebody knows you, they're like, oh, Wayne, don't put himself in the show again. But here's the thing: like, if, <laughs> if you work with me, like you wouldn't you wouldn't think that it's not like I'm walking around like this. I think it all sort of like I take on everything, every all the other like stress and like bottle it up and try to solve it in my little internal factory. Yeah. You know what I mean? So no, I feel so, you on that. So when people see me, it's like, wow, you're so calm. Wow, you got it all together and inside. Without, like, without knowing like the inner turmoil, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, see, damn, now they know. Now they know, Wayne. You've been stressing the right, whole time. Man? Yeah. You all right, man? Yeah. All right. So now we at the uh, we at the second part of the show. And this is you answering the question, how in the hell? did I get here? So I know you talked about your story earlier, which I think would definitely qualify of being on a couch with a pregnant girlfriend. But if you have a story that made you say, all right, Wayne, how in the hell did I get here? What would it be? How in the hell did I get here uh, would be how, how in the hell did I get to Ojai, California? I'm, you know, born and raised in Compton, spent some time in Inglewood, Hawthorne, LA, Lemur Park, but now, you know, at almost, you know, I'm 48 and I'm living in Ojai where there's, it's a predominantly white little small town. Um, you know, after the last season of Real Husbands, literally we wrapped on a Wednesday. I flew out to New York Saturday to start work on Monday for the nightly show with Larry Wilmore, right? Okay. So that kept me in New York for five years, which, you know, New York was great. Like I sold my car and have to, you know, we walked everywhere. I caught the trains and buses, whatever. Right. And now, you know, because of the pandemic, we're like, well, should we need to like quarantine in L.A.? Because New York was just getting too out of control. Right. So my daughter had been doing homeschooling for, you know, the whole the whole school year. And I felt so bad for her because she's such a life, like in New York, she was like the life of the party. Like all of her friends wanted to go to her parties and social butterfly. Or, yeah. She was in, but having to be in front of a computer for, you know, 12 hours a day was just not good for her. So she's like, I'm like, well, let's do something for her for the summer. And I just happened to, she wanted to ride horses. Right. So I, I just happened to find this equestrian camp. First of all, brother talking about a question. Yeah, I was going to say that's it's, yeah, it's, it's real. Like, that should be a note that you've reached a certain level in your career. Of, that's what I'm saying. Like, how the hell did I get here? Right. <laughs> so <laughs> so we found this equestrian camp at Ojai Valley School and she loved it. Wait, we you know, we came out here for we got an Airbnb and stayed for a couple of weeks. The session was two weeks. And she was like, oh, but but that every everybody else in the camp stand for two sessions. And I'm like, all right, so am I going to be the dad who's like, yeah, but you're doing one. I was like, all right, well, let's get you two. You know, we're here. So during that time, me and my wife were like just hanging out and hiking and they had great restaurants and spas and, you know, wine tasting, all that. Like we're just chilling. 
And we were like, this is actually a cool place to like live. You know what I mean? So long way from Compton uh, lifestyle, long way from wine Compton. tastings, <laughs> which, which is a good thing. Cause like, you know, family has to really think twice about, you know, just popping up, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a so we're so we're kind of tucked away in this little small town. We're surrounded by mountains and trees, and and you know my daughter she she rides horses once a week. She's involved in all these activities, and like going from a point in my life where I didn't even I was on unemployment, didn't even have enough money in my bank account to cash my unemployment check, to being able to have you know to buy a house in Ojai to like provide for my my daughter and make sure my wife is good and. Like for me, you know, still, you know, stressing over money, even though I'm working, like I'm always like, yeah, but I'm, I'm not that far removed from like that count, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? I, I yeah. still keep that in mind, but I'm like, how the hell did I get here? And I'm just like really grateful for all of the like ups and downs and the stuff that I've gone through in my career so far to be able to, you know, be able to provide when I didn't know if I was going to even be able to, I was, like I said, I was going to looking for a, I was looking for a Whole Foods or, you know, not to knock those jobs at all, but that, that's where I was at the time. But to be able to live in somewhat of like a little piece of comfort, I'm like, man, how the hell did I get here? Yeah, it feels good, don't it? Yeah, man. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, yeah. hey, look, man, I, I 100% and I won't get into my story about it, but like, trust me, I know all that you're talking about because my version <laughs> of like the Whole Foods like Target. <laughs> it's like, hey. I might have to. uh I might have to do this, I guess, but um, as a story yeah. for another day. Well, look, man, because we'll I worked at Target for a day and quit. I'm like, I can't do this. I, I'm like, I'm hey, miserable. Look, I and did, I got to wear this red shirt and these khaki pants. I can't do it. I did Target for exactly four weeks. Get hired, two weeks training, uh -huh. put in my two weeks notice and work the two weeks. <laughs> yeah. So a total of four weeks. But um, anyway, thank you so much, man, for those stories for that inspiration uh, for people that may want to follow in your footsteps at some point. And um, I hope you had a good time with me, man. I know I had a good time. So let the people know what you got going on, what's next for Wayne and how can they find you on uh, social media? Man. Uh, first of all, my biggest priority right now is to like try to get as many people as possible to watch real husbands of Hollywood, more Kevin, Absolutely. more problems. Um, it premieres on BET plus on February 10th. Um, so it's three days before the Super Bowl. Uh, you know, we we put our we've been working on this thing. I've been working on it. We started writing back in March. Wow. We shot we shot six episodes in 18 days and we spent four over four months in post. So this is like this is one of our most this is this is our most epic season, even though we only did six. And I'm like, if we're going to do six, we're going to go be big. badass six. Yeah, so we went pretty big. So, so please, like you know, tell people about it. I know it's a pain in the ass for some people to get BET Plus. I feel you, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I I hear that there may be a little sneak peek. I'm not sure yet, but I, I'll keep people posted on that. But but please, like, check out the show. Kevin is incredible um, with all that he's doing. He brought his heart and soul to the show. Dwayne is like my sixth man of the year. He's incredible. JB Smooth is. Yeah. Smooth. We got some great guest cast. Um, so, but beyond that, man, I'm, I'm developing a, a drama series um, with Topic Studios. Uh, so now Lathan is attached to star in it. Um, so we're, you know, hopefully we'll, we'll go out and pitch that next month. Um, I actually sold a, a comedy, a sketch comedy show with um, Tiffany Haddish and Charlemagne the God, which we're still, you know, we're, we've been sort of going back and forth over the creative. So, you know, hopefully that'll, that'll land somewhere. Wow. That's dope. And uh, I'm writing a movie with Ralph Farquhar. We're writing the story of uh, the fever. I don't know if anybody you know remembers, but um, this is this is kind of before my time. But the fever was the first or one of the first hip hop clubs in the Bronx back in like the late seventies, early eighties. Okay. So we're writing that movie. Um, it's where Run DMC was discovered. The Fat Boys, you know, Curtis wow. Blow, and all those guys used to be there. That sounds so like it's gonna be an really amazing super project. interesting story. Um, the story about Sal, he, he owned the club and he's still around, he's got a million stories. So he's an incredible guy to, to, to listen to. Right. Um, but yeah, but and my social handles are just at Wayne Stamps. Um, you know, hit me up, follow me. Um, I don't post a lot, but when I try, when I do post, I try to make it count. Okay. Um, and anybody, you know, if you need help, 
advice. Like I'm always open to help as many people as I can. So, you know, I'm, I'm always here. So just, just working, trying to, trying to think about the next project and, and try not to, you know, worry myself to death. Yeah, don't be too stressed. <laughs> you got to keep your daughter on them, uh, them horses though. Yeah. So yeah, you got to keep yeah, the work absolutely. coming in. But no, thank you so much, man. I really enjoyed you being on the show, man. I, I truly appreciate um, that you came on. And I do definitely appreciate the opportunity to be attached uh, to the show. Oh, man. Uh, Real Husbands yeah. of Hollywood, more Kevin, more problems. And That's now right. I see why you had to have me go with such a big, epic voice. I mean, it's yeah, it's what the uh, show needed. It- it does not disappoint when you have like, you know, white guys in their 60s laughing on set, you know, all the way down to like, you know, young kids and their teenagers like laughing. It's like it's across the board comedy and and yeah, these guys sure. don't hold back. So it's, it's a hilarious season. So I really encourage people to, to check it out. Absolutely. Well, I'll definitely be telling people about it. And uh, look, man, I wish you the best, man. Uh, best Thank of you, luck man. with everything that you got going on. Likewise. And uh, yeah, man. Thanks again. And to everybody, thank you for watching The How Did Show, and I'll check you out next time. Peace. All right. Appreciate you. What's going on, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me and having some fun as we interview some really, really interesting people. So go ahead, like, comment, subscribe, and be on the lookout for more episodes of The How Did Show.